Hey everybody, welcome to Raising Vibrations, your Simon today. And uh, today's video, we're going to be looking at the eclipses. And in particular, we're going to be looking at um, the significant events that are taking place with this uh, eclipse uh, portal that we're experiencing. So just to give you some heads up, this is a video that is part of a playlist. And you will see that the playlist will grow where we will continue to add some videos. So what we've gone and done is we've created a lunar eclipse video. There's a solar eclipse video. There's Jupiter retrograde. There's Saturn retrograde. There's Mercury retrograde. And they will all be part of um, this playlist, okay? And um, we'll just continue to add videos as soon as that has been completed, all right? So what we're going to be looking at today is just kind of, you know, touching base with what we consider to be um, essential aspects and essential points that this eclipse represents, you know, for us and what we feel we could um, suggest to you in terms of how to make sense of this energy at the moment. So the first thing that I think is really important for, for us to pay attention to is, so we've got the uh, lunar eclipse that takes place on the 26th of May. And this is a really significant lunar eclipse because you've got Jupiter entering uh, Pisces, right? So two degrees Pisces. And of course the lunar eclipse is in Sagittarius, right? And just so you know, there is a, 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 another video that specifically just looks at the astrology of that and kind of the message there. So we've got the south node, uh, south node in Sagittarius, and we have Jupiter that is essentially going to be squaring the nodes, uh, meaning that Jupiter is forming a 90 degree angle to the south node and north node. And um, it, this is going to happen, and then Mercury is going to go retrograde. So we're going to have a lunar eclipse take place, and then we're going to have Mercury retrograde. And whenever Mercury goes retrograde, what essentially happens is the um, sort of logical functioning of our cognition, you know, so the way that we label reality, we, we form uh, information based on gathering information, right? And we, we form perception using that, that uh, feature, that goes offline, okay? And so we're left with the deep intuitive space and we're left with the kind of more abstract feminine nature uh, of our cognition. That's generally what happens with Mercury retrograde. So when Mercury goes offline, it points towards Jupiter and it says, now for the next month or so, you're going to be processing what you've been gathering over the last sort of four months that Mercury has been moving direct. And now we have access to what has been stored. Does that make sense? So everything during the Mercury direct phase, now when Mercury goes to retrograde, we now it's pointing to Jupiter and it's saying everything that's now in the right brain, it's going to be processed. So it's significant because the lunar eclipse that we have take place 26th of May, that will speak to the initiation of this deep abstract processing that is taking place for us all, you know, in the world. So how does that become more concrete? Like how do we actually interact with that? Now, <clears throat> When you look at the south, when you look at the solar, the lunar eclipse here, what's really, really profound to me is two things. One, you've got the Uranus quincunx in the south node, and you also have Mars coming into an opposition to Pluto. And if I'm not mistaken, Pluto is also making an inconjunct uh, to Mercury. Okay, so you've got two quincunxes in this lunar eclipse, and um, Again, it's with one with Pluto and I've gone with the South Node. But these two quincunxes have got um, outer planets associated with them. All right. And again, so just so you know that there is a whole entire video, um, lunar eclipse video, where I'll go more into detail with it. So those two quincunxes, I think, play a very big role in setting the tone for the next six months as we go into this eclipse pattern, this lunar eclipse pattern. And what we see is the initiation of our the initiation into seeing which beliefs and ideas and perceptions about ourselves are holding us back so that's the question what is holding me back from living a more empowered life All right so that's one question you can ask yourself during this eclipse uh, period and 
the reason why this quincunx, I think, plays a significant role, one of them being with Uranus in the south node, the other one being with Mercury, is that when we're growing up, right, we have a certain amount of experiences. We also see things happen in our lives, okay, when we're growing up. And often when we notice these experiences or events or situations uh, that are negative, we can tend to internalize them or those messages in a way that say is protective of us, right? So we might have an experience where, um, you know, growing up in a home where let's say, you know, mom and dad were really religious in some way, and you felt that you wanted to challenge those ideas, but every time you challenged those ideas, um, you, you got kind of a negative response. And so now as you are an adult, anytime you want to step into sort of speaking up about something that you feel is who you are, there's this belief that says, oh, nobody will believe me or nobody will take me seriously or nobody um, fill in the dots, right? So what I see with this eclipse pattern and what we see with this eclipse pattern is the initiation into looking at where we have uh, ideas, beliefs, internalized ideas, ter internalized belief systems um, around our self-worth, so Uranus and Taurus, and around our uh, ability to be free from these perceptions, right, so that are sometimes, not sometimes, but most of the time deeply um, subconscious. And so that kind of drives our day and we interact with reality and we perceive it through this lens. So we're, in a sense, with this lunar eclipse, solar eclipse energy, we're getting the potential to be able to work through uh, ideas and perceptions and beliefs that we carry in a more deeper part of us and how they influence our present moment, right? How do they influence the present moment and how we are perceiving, digesting, and taking in reality, okay? Now, Mercury, the last time that Mercury was retrograde, it was in uh, February, if I'm not mistaken, right? So, and that was in Aquarius. And we know that Saturn's been in Aquarius. So if you think about Saturn retrograde that happened on the 22nd, 23rd of May, um, we were deeply initiated into looking out for where we are spending our time. And is that time valuable to us or not? Like, are we interacting with something or an experience or a situation? And are we valuing our time, right? So that's a deep question to ask ourselves, especially with regards to Saturn uh, squaring Uranus here and then the quincunx between the south node and Uranus, right? We've got this trigger that shows up for us and it says, where you are investing emotional attention, are you being, are you rewarding yourself with something that is actually nourishing you or are you giving away, and this is where we see the solar eclipse come in here is, or are you, giving your time away in exchange for validation, in exchange for being seen, in exchange for um, an unmet need that is unresolved. Okay, so if we kind of look towards the solar eclipse, what we're looking at is how can we begin to change our mindset? So the last time Mercury was in retrograde was in Aquarius. Aquarius wants us to liberate ourselves and free ourselves from certain mindsets that we have, how we perceive things. Mercury now goes retrograde again, but remember that when it goes retrograde, what we're processing, right brain, Jupiter, is all of the information that we've been gathering about our reality in our life since, um, since uh, February, right? So we're processing, we're looking back, Saturn retrograde, Jupiter retrograde, Mercury retrograde, we're looking back and we're asking ourselves over the last couple of months, where have I been investing my time and energy into something that's been rewarding to me? And where have I been investing my time and energy into something that has um, felt like I am giving away, right? I, I'm exchanging something and I'm not nourishing myself. It's not being replenished in me. So where am I being distracted? Where am I not focusing on the thing that I really want to achieve in my life? Where am I not putting my attention to deepen my relationship to the thing or to the experience or to the goal that I would wish to accomplish or nourish in my life? So what I see and what, like I said, what we see uh, in terms of this eclipse portal with Saturn going retrograde, where am I investing my time? Jupiter retrograde, 
in Pisces and then Aquarius? Where am I still held back by the ghosts of my former self that are in a sense possessing my moment and this moment and letting me interact with the reality from that past self where the belief is, oh, I shouldn't talk about this or nobody will trust me or nobody believes me or whatever it is that we may have had. We all carry this with us. Where do we still believe? Where do we still sabotage ourselves, right? So, um, and then we've got the Mercury retrograde that's asking us the question, you know, the problems that we have in our personal lives, how are we solving them? You know, what are the questions that we are asking ourselves that allow us to deepen the relationship to the problems that we feel that we are facing internally? So the solar eclipse pre will, in my view, uh, bring to the surface material and awareness and situations and circumstances, as well as the potential to see things from a different point of view, Mercury, and to ask ourselves, what is opening up for me? What is illuminating itself for me right now? How can I be, how can I take these really sudden shocking moments that just showed up for me right now with this Uranus quincunx the South node that I'm like, whoa, hold on, jeeps, creepers. I'm, I'm really in, you know, in the moment with this experience. How is, how is my, my mindset needing to grow and expand? So with the solar eclipse in Gemini, the potential to look beyond what we know, right? To allow ourselves to open up a more, to, to more than what we see, right? So. What are we limiting? Where can we open up our perceptions? How do we understand the question that we want to ask about our lives? Right? So all of us in some way, shape or form have a question about the, the existence of our life. And so we want to get really clear on what that question is about and what does that question mean? So with Mercury going retrograde, this is a great opportunity to reflect back on where do I feel that my beliefs are limiting me? And that can be a really, really difficult question because it's like, well, I don't really know. Well, the question, the way that you would answer that is something along the lines of how can I free myself? What does freedom look like to me? Not what is it in terms of a word, but how do I define freedom for myself? And what types of thinking can lead me to liberating from certain ideas or perceptions I have about my life now, but were actually influenced and deeply um, shaped when I was growing up? Okay. Cool. So like I said, this is an introduction video. This will be part of a playlist where we'll put all the other videos as well. The Lunar Eclipse video should be there um, very soon. And my question to you is, uh, what is it about this video that you found valuable? So if you can write that in the comments, as well as what was the takeaway from this video that you found that could support you in your, your processing of this uh, eclipse season? All right. Okay, everybody, thanks very much for listening, and I look forward to seeing you in another video. Bye.